So in the last video, we saw how we could use the sum function to add up values, but it's quite possible we will want to perform other operations. Sean has decided he can add real value by including an average for each sales manager, as well as their highest and lowest quarter. Only small problem is Sean isn't sure how to calculate an average. Fortunately, Excel can help us with this. Start by clicking on the cell where you want the answer to go. Then come up to your formula bar and keep going left until you get to the small fx, which is called insert function. Click on the fx and it brings up the insert function dialog, which asks you what type of operation you want to perform. Now we want to get an average, so type it in and click go. Excel has returned all the functions that it feels might help you and right at the top is average, which is perfect. So click OK. Just like the sum, Excel's tried to get an average of all the values to the left, which is not correct. We don't want to include our total. So we're going to replace that selection with our four quarters by just selecting them. You will notice we can also add additional sets of values and we even get a preview of what the answer is going to be. We're happy, we click OK. So that was calculating an average using the insert function. Now we'd also like to get Anya's best quarter. So we're going to once again click in the cell where we want the answer to go. This time we know the function we want to use is the max function. So we're not going to use the insert function, but we're going to come up to our auto sum and just to the right there's a drop down and if you click on that, Wow, so you can use AutoSum to also get average count, max and min. Brilliant. Let's click max. And again, it's selected all the values to the left, but we know the drill now. We're going to go and select the values we actually want and then press tab. And there is Anya's highest. No prizes for guessing then that to get the lowest value, we use the min function. This time though, we're going to try typing it in, which is actually the quickest. So I'm going to type equals M and Excel brings up all the functions that begin with the letter M. Min is quite far down the list. So if I type an I, that will bring it up higher. And now to select the min, I can either double click or if you want to use your keyboard, down arrow and tab. On a PC, remember you must press tab, not enter and then again select the values I want and enter. So that was how we could use average, max and min. We don't need to type those all again, we can use our fill handle. So I'm going to select all three calculations, come to my fill handle and drag all the way down to the bottom row. All copied down, except for one small problem. You will notice we've lost the formatting in our total row and that's because when we use the fill handle it copies both the calculation and the formatting. Not a problem, come to fill options, click the drop down and choose fill without formatting. Total row restored to glory. So let's recap, we have looked at four functions so far, the sum function which allows us to get a total of large ranges, the average, which will return us the average of a range, the max, which gets us the largest value in a data set, and the min, which returns the smallest value. Make sure you get a chance to practice with all four of these.